My dad told me, and I never forgot this, don't ever get in a fight unless somebody seeks to harm your brother and sister. And man, I'll tell you what, when I grew up, people knew, do not mess with Tom and Pam Ramos. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marked by dust and sweat and blood. From men in the arena, it's Equipping Men in 10. Our conviction is to call you into the arena of manhood, call you out of the faceless, nameless bleachers, and call you up to be the best version of you. Because when a man gets it, everyone wins. Enjoy today's episode. Men in the Arena Army, we We salute salute you. you. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode of Equipping Men in 10. I'm Jim Ramos, and I'm here with our co-host, Dale Culver. How you doing today, man? Doing excellent. Hey, we got a lot to cover today with our Ask Me Anything series, so I'm going to jump on into a man word. What do you got? All right. Uh, I've never used this. It's my man word phrase. So this word is inundated, and I say phrase because I'm using this as, guys, we are inundated with a lot of things in life, and you got to kind of put up a firewall. And I'm thinking of the information that comes into you, what your kids come in, what's coming at them, what's coming at your wife, what's coming into your house. And uh, I think if I were to go back as a parent, there's a lot of things that I would put up more firewalls. Yeah. uh, What we're watching, what listening to, all that stuff. We did pretty good, Mm -hmm. but I think I could have been more vigilant Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about what I'm being inundated by in the world. Yeah, the hard part when I was raising my kids and when you were raising your older kids is that technology was in transition. We were going from flip phones to smartphones, right? And how do you, and cable to you know apps like Hulu and Netflix, and right. there was this transition, and so trying to navigate that was very very difficult. I actually think it's easier now for parents than it was when our kids were little because it's fairly solid and you can draw a line in the sand and say okay listen here's the deal uh you're you know with your smartphone and the firewalls and and covenant eyes and with your television and the apps and and regulating screen time i think it's easier now they have things that you can set up yeah it's a non-issue they just can't get to i it. just think parents have to be vigilant right which because they're in it so that's great man that's great hey so ask me anything so i want to jump on in this uh, again if we Use yours and you hit us up at info at manandarena.org with your address. We will send you some swag to say thanks. So this is from Mid-Atlantic Mortgage Guy. <laughs> and he says, how do you figure out what uh, what to write for your books? And so for me personally, uh, I see a problem out there and I want to address it in a big way and I don't see it being addressed. You know, I've, I've read 60 books last year. This year, it looks like I'll read about 40, 45 just if I'm looking at the pathway I'm on right now, if I don't see something being written about and it's bothering me and I have my Popeye moment, you know, that's all I can stand. I can't stand some more. I'll write a book. So Strong Men, Dangerous Times really came out of the fact that nobody is out there defining manhood to a culture that's really confused. And so that was the reason why I wrote that book. The one that just came out, it just came out last week, which I'm really excited about. We haven't talked a lot about it because we're waiting to get the hard bound book out this is a guts and manhood the four irrefutable attributes of courage this book morphed from a devotional in in 2001 to another devotional fill you know when i say devotional i mean i'm journaling my devotions in another devotional then in 2011 when we got ready to launch men in the arena and as i put those together and unpacked what they meant i noticed something that was very monumental about courage and people we talk a lot about courage but nobody actually has written anything that deals with what is courage made of and as a christian what is the christian perspective of courage so we wrote so that's why we wrote this book so i'm really excited about that the full capacity man which is going to come out in june of 2023 which is written to 90,000 words which i got to cut down to 60,000 that book was written because you know we can define manhood which we did really well in strong men dangerous times but i felt like there was a lot more 
a lot more detail involved in what that man looks like. So s full capacity man is really the strong strong men dangerous times in in high definition. Uh, it really is a wonderful beautiful book, but that was the impetus for that. And so our curriculum is kind of the same way we you know we see a need and we we go after it. I, one great author said, you know, he prays and prays and prays and prays and he's like a baby who's been overfed and and the baby gets burped and so you know he God feeds him feeds him feeds him and then burps him and out comes this book so mm. uh, if you like the baby illustration more power to you but for me i hopefully that answers your question so and I, actually book writing is not necessarily hard guys but writing a good book is so the next question comes from spg and uh, he says or she how do you tell the difference between god's leading and your own will and that's a great question and so you didn't ask me how do you know or how do you hear from God? You asked me, how can I tell the difference between God's leading and your own will? The first thing I'll tell you is it has to align with scripture. You know, I had a guy tell me one day, hey, I think God told me to divorce my wife. And I go, no, he didn't. That's not what the Bible says about marriage. So there's no way God told you that. So first of all, it needs to align with scripture. And I would say if you're, if you're concerned, seek godly counsel. A godly counsel mm -hmm. will confirm or deny whether that's God's leading or your own will. Another thing I would say is when I pray in the morning, like this is just my prayer time here. I'm looking at a sheet full of stuff on a yellow notepad. When God speaks to me, is it something I would not say normally? Is it a word or a person or a phrase that comes up in my brain that would never come up normally? So for me, when that happens, I really take notice. Now for me personally, 99% of the things God speaks to me are very small, common things that deal with the day. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They're nothing profound. But sometimes I'll have a name pop in my head or this, call this person or whatever. And when I have this name pop in my brain, I reach out to that person. And here's why. Whether it is God's will or or, or my will, it doesn't matter because it fulfills this requirement for me, whether I'm going to respond to this voice in my head. Will it bless somebody? So when I say, hey, bro, I'm just thinking about you, praying for you, man. Hope you're, all, you're everything's well. You know, whether that actually was the voice of God speaking to me or my own will, that guy is blessed. I've reached out in love to bless that person. I say guy because I would never do that with a woman. <laughs> you know, uh, that to me, that is that honors God right in in its nature the other thing for me is is it something that challenges me to become my best version right so god wouldn't say to me hey go down to the buffet and and go have a buffet <laughs> lunch today that is not something god would say to me but but as i'm sitting at a lunch table looking at the hamburger with french fries and ranch dressing which is my always my temptation and i have this thought in my brain you need to order the salad with olive oil See, now that to me might be a God thing because that's bettering me, you know. So this is a very tough thing. Uh, over the years, I think the Bible is the most important way we navigate God's will. Anything you want to add, Dale? Yeah, I just, I think sometimes we over-trivialize things. And uh, do you know the character of God? Good and, point. And uh, again, I'll go back to this, man. Reading your Bible is a very big deal. You got to know the Bible. <laughs> if you know, if you read the Bible, you'll know God's character, and that will answer so much. And I think so many times people want to justify. They want, they'll go to that. You said godly counsel. Make sure that godly counsel person is gonna is somebody who's comfortable enough to push back on you. And who knows the word. Yeah, and they got to know the word. And I was reading this morning in the Bible in 2 Timothy 3, I think it's verse... 14 this morning or 13 i'm journaling it. it says you know the things that you've been convinced of he's telling timothy and i'm like man we need a culture that is more convinced yeah about what they believe you know the the early church was persecuted and martyred not because of their faith but because they were so stubborn about what they believed that they would not pledge allegiance to caesar they were so stubborn and we just need more of that we need guys that are stubborn about the word of god and obey anyway so the third one we'll we'll go we'll tackle one more question today and then we will uh put that off till next week we got several more questions keep those questions coming guys here's a great question from jenna J. <laughs> So I don't know if that's a husband, a wife, a husband wife combo. So uh, maybe you hit us up and we'll, we'll know we'll know that mystery will be solved. Here's the question: What should a dad teach his firstborn son? Now I am a firstborn son. Are you? 
No, I'm the second. Okay, so I'm a firstborn son. So I will say, first of all, I'll say this. If you're talking about teaching your son, that's one thing. If you're teaching your firstborn son, that's another thing. Okay, so I have a whole set of reels on Instagram that I am uploading this week about things a father should teach their son. So if you just want to know what a father should teach their son, man, go check out those reels on Instagram. They're really, really fun. I, I did them on one of my my four mile hikes. I love to do it really a great set of reels. So now, as far as your firstborn son, this is a little different. So as a firstborn, here's the first thing I would teach your son always protect your little brothers and sisters mm -hmm. my dad told me and i never forgot this don't ever get in a fight unless somebody seeks to harm your brother and sister and man i'll tell you what when i grew up people knew <laughs> do not mess with tom and pam ramos because their brother will bring the heat i didn't like to fight but if you hurt somebody i loved i was vicious so i would say protect your little siblings i would say I would say this isn't necessarily teach them to do something, but I would teach them they're the child of blessing. The firstborn is always the child of blessing in the Bible, almost every time, except for Ephraim and Manasseh. And uh, what was the other one? I'm just blanking. Jacob and Esau. Jacob yeah. and Esau, because he traded it for a bowl of soup. Yep. Anyway, but you are the child of blessing. And the reason why you are the child of blessing is not only do you potentially carry your son's name, your son carry your namesake, but also you make the most mistakes with that first one. Oh, yeah. I mean, my dad, I'm sure my dad told me he was sorry more times than the others because he was so, he always said, I'm so, I'm so hard on you. I'm so hard on you. I just made so many, I was so hard, you know, and so we will make mistakes that firstborn son. I made mistakes with my firstborn son. You know, there's a joke out there when your firstborn, you know, swallows a, a dime. You know, you take him to the emergency room and freak out. By the time the third or fourth comes along, they swallow a quarter. You take it out of their allowance. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you make a lot more mistakes uh, with that first one. And I would just ask my my firstborn son, "Hey, give dad grace. I've never done this before, and I'm going to make mistakes. And you're the guy I'm going to make mistakes with. So I just need you to give me grace." And then I would say the other thing is, uh, ask for forgiveness often. Be willing to ask for forgiveness. So that's I good. think that's what I would say. Do you have anything to add on that one? Yeah, I have a firstborn son now that we adopted. So yeah, he's yeah. actually your fourth child, but yeah. your firstborn but son. But it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. So you're right. Um, I, I would say these are all great. And uh, with him, because he's the youngest, he's not necessarily the one that can protect. But yeah. we, the main thing I try to teach him is to honor women respect honor and protect women so that's huge yeah that's good man i appreciate that hey why don't you uh, take us home yeah guys we want you to head on over to our website at men in the and grab your free electronic version of our newest book tell them what great fathers tell their sons and daughters and while you're there why don't you click on join our program and get into mm -hmm. one of our many virtual teams when you do that and you enter your information there it'll automatically open up a page for you and you can pick amongst the times and dates that work for you click on one of the names of the team captains send them an email and say hey man i'm in i want to join your virtual group and i want to become the best version that i can be so until next time fill the wet sand on the arena floor hear the deafening roar of the crowd Taste the sweetness of victory. Smell the stench of battle. Get in the game. Get dirty. Grind it out. And be a man. You've been listening to the Men in the Arena podcast. If you hunger to be your best version, then join thousands of men from around the world in our Men in the Arena forum on Facebook. This is the best place to have open discussions around the topic of biblical manhood. Make sure to explore our website at meninthearena.org, sign up for the weekly equipping blast, and take advantage of our many free resources designed to help you become your best version of a man. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Men in the Arena podcast. Remember, when a man gets it, everyone wins wins.